News Live in Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. A very emotional senior day for the Bison football team. 24 seniors came out of the tunnel to thunderous roars from Bison Nation. After that, the Bison demolished yet another opponent. NDSU moves into the bracket without a loss. Joining us on set, head coach Chris Kleiman, and it's that time of year, but we're going to talk about the seniors first, though. What a special day that was, and to honor these guys, they've had just tremendous careers. Yeah, it was an emotional day for those guys. Emotional week, you know, we do our senior talks, and can't say enough about those guys. It's where our program is, and it's why it's so successful, is each senior class that we've had has been so instrumental in our success and, and in teaching the younger guys, and this group was no different. Yeah, the bracket comes out today, but 11-0, and 0, that's hard to do as well, uh, to go undefeated in the regular season. Yeah, it really is and credit those seniors uh, did a phenomenal job of continuing to challenge everybody on a daily basis it's really difficult to be ready to go every week and everybody says well how can you not be ready to go well we see it across the landscape of college football teams losing games that maybe you'd think on paper they shouldn't our guys never worried about what the paper said yep. they worried about their own job and making sure that we were ready to play well the bracket comes out later today you've secured the home field in the top seed that's a big deal I think it's a really big deal it's gonna be a rock in Fargo Dome yeah. and uh, I told the guys at the end uh, at the end of the game uh, let's just focus on on this week and getting ourselves healthy and then every week just focus on each day of what we can do to be better because we can't look long term we have to look at the short term and yeah. for us the short term is just making sure that we get our guys healthy let's break down the southern illinois game uh the salukis came in they haven't been here in a while they've been off the schedule in the uh, unbalanced schedule in the missouri valley but here they are and a little jolt from the salukis to start this football game out yeah a little adversity we got a bunch of young guys on the on this team and and uh, we missed some fits and cam was the only one that had a real good shot at, at tackling him. and this is a pretty uh, talented young man and uh we're down seven to nothing and have a little adversity, which uh, our guys responded pretty well to. You know, it didn't take long to answer, though. The, the question about Southern Illinois coming into this football game was their defense, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. I, I think that we had a lot of different areas that we could attack them, and uh, right off the bat, we were going to see how they were going to play Shep, and sure enough, they played him hand-to-man -man early, and, and we get a big play. Well, SIU has had a really tough year on defense. They've had some injuries. They just don't have the depth on that side of the football. No, they really don't. Great uh, cut here by Ty. Really excited to see a, a full-speed Ty Brooks, which we haven't had for a few weeks. I thought he looked really good. You know, on the flip side of that, though, their offense is pretty good. Uh, they like the quarterback run. They can run the football, rushing over 200 yards a game coming in. Yeah, no, they're a really good offensive team. I really like their quarterback. He's a senior. They, We think they have as good a, a wide receiver skill kids, and then they have a talented running back. Yep, big pass play to Christian Watson right here, all the way down to the goal line. Yeah, really great protection by the Rams there. I'm sure Christian's kicking himself for not getting in the end zone, <laughs> but uh, big play by Christian. Do finish it off here, obviously. So it's 14-7, uh, to 7 and, and the points are starting to pile up for you here. Yeah, really important for us to get that lead back. And it was a long first quarter, some, some delays, a lot of points, and it uh, seemed like we were out there forever. Tell you what, they have a receiver. His name's Raphael Leonard, and he is a football player. He's a great player, and uh, he just beats our defensive back inside on a move, and and uh, not very many people have caught him. We've seen him catch those against Old Miss and everybody else. Yeah, he's a senior. Thank goodness for that. The tight ends uh, for the Bison have been really involved in the the play calling. Yeah, lately. really good play action fake here. Great job by Jensen. Then what a great job by Darius Shepard blocking two guys uh, to allow Jensen to have the free path to the end zone. Yep, 21 to 14 at this point and this is where Southern Illinois started to get in trouble they started to turn the football over and, and give you short fields yeah and that's what we needed to have we talked about it on defense need to have a, a couple turnovers great play by Dan Marlette there stripping the uh, running back from the ball and very next play you make them pay that's the key on a turnover uh, make them pay right away and it's 28 14 yeah great play action fake and uh, Ben Elfson slips behind the secondary he's done so often and it's a big touch. Yeah, Ben Ellison has been finding the end zone a lot this year. He's really turned into an all-around tight end. He's an exceptional player, and, and Easton has great confidence in him. Robbie Grimsley played well. He did a great job. A great job of baiting the play on this and thinking, the, the, telling the quarterback he looks like he's going in the middle of the field, and then he bounces over and makes a big interception. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, on the other side, the points keep piling up. Uh, their pass defense, they were down five corners with injury and just no depth there. No, and, and once again, uh, Easton's got all day to throw back there, so credit the offensive line. Yeah. The Rams did a great job of protecting him. Yep, 35-14 at that point. Here, good pressure by the D-line all day. 
Yeah, really good job getting pressure, and then Robbie's in another good spot to make the interception. No doubt. Third down percentage, again, offensively was fantastic. We're going to see a sequence here where we got three third downs in a row on a really nice drive here. Third and six starts it out. Yeah, I thought it was a great play by Dallas Freeman. I think Dallas played a really good game and continuing to improve, continuing to get confidence from Easton and, and makes a good play. And then uh, I think it's a third and short, and everybody yep. think and run, and we run a bootleg series and get the ball to Brock for a, a nice gain as well. And this is a third nine, uh, third and long. Also, uh, this is a good play call. Yeah, really good job by Nate Jensen. Great concentration. It's the ball's tipped, and, and Jens keeps a good focus on the football and makes a big first down. This does end up in a turnover, but you, you took a lot of time off the clock. You, you flipped the field. You did all kinds of good things on this drive. Yeah, and I thought their safety made a really good play, cutting in front of, uh, of the receiver for the interception. No doubt. Uh, Derek Tuska, I thought, played a fantastic football game this weekend. Yeah, DT does a great job off the edge. Just beats the tackle quickly and gets a big sack on a really mobile quarterback that uh, we had concerns with. It, that he would step up in the pocket and, and scramble around. Yeah, he's turning into an elite player. There's no question about that. Derek Tuska. Southern Illinois and North Dakota State 35-14 at halftime on our NODAC insurance scoreboard. The total yards you see SIU, 175. A lot of that on the big play. Uh, the Bison at 371. You see the turnovers were a factor plus two for the Bison in the first half. Before we get to the second half, one of those seniors who's had a great career, Aaron Steidel on the hot seat. Aaron, what teammate do you relate the best to? Uh, I gotta say Colin Connor. Uh, me and him just kind of hang out a lot, go hunting together, and just kind of, you know, equal personalities. Excellent. Your favorite member of the Bison coaching staff? Uh, Coach Kramer. Got a lot of respect for him. Okay. What sport did you try as a child that you failed at? I tried soccer. My, not my, not my forte. <laughs> What was your favorite Halloween costume? Uh, I never really got real creative with Halloween costumes, but the one I did think it was kind of creative was I was like a vampire hunter. So I wore orange, put some blood on my face, and some teeth, and that's the one. You probably had some hunter orange to go around, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. What did you get in the most trouble for with your parents? Uh, I never was a real, I wasn't a goody two shoes, but I wasn't in trouble, but I always was late for curfew. Okay. If you could be best friends with a celebrity, who would that be? Uh, Jennifer Aniston. Okay. There were some that's friends. a good one. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. What is the most expensive thing you would buy if you had unlimited money? I'd probably buy a bunch of hunting land, probably a thousand acres of my own, manage it myself. And Where would it be at, though? Ooh, that's tough. Is it maybe out by Montana or out in Colorado, depending on what kind of hunting you want to do. There you go. Best summer job you've ever had? I worked for a tree service for my cousin for a couple of years. And uh, good pay, hard work, but it was probably one of my strongest summers I ever got. So. Worst food you've ever tasted? Budafisk. Well, Coach, how did you want to finish this game out? Well, we knew we were going to play some young guys, but uh, we challenged those guys. We needed to finish. We needed to continue to improve, uh, control the, the line of scrimmage, and, uh, and, and finish the game the way we want to. Let's roll the tape here in the second half against Southern Illinois, the final game of the regular season. Senior day, uh, you got the ball to start the second half because you won the toss and deferred. This is a third and three right away. Yeah, really good job here uh, protecting, good little out route to, to Shep. It was really important for us to make a good drive here on the first, uh, first drive of the second half. This bubble screen's been a good play. You know, the last four or five weeks, people just keep getting closer to the line of scrimmage and so we're trying to keep them spread out and, and bubble's been really good for us you know ty brooks uh, had the burst i thought bruce had the burst the backs look good yeah really good blocking downfield by the old lineman as well as brock robbins and, and big run by ty southern illinois their body language is getting down a little bit nobody touches bruce out here on the edge yeah and uh, there's not a whole lot of <laughs> edge on the defense there and, and a big score uh, to start the second half yeah 42 to 14. Uh, caleb butler one of those seniors i thought he made a couple of nice plays on senior day he's had a good career yeah he does a really good job here continuing to stay relentless on the quarterback well the wheels came off uh, for southern illinois and it affects their special teams yeah, um, they just snapped overhead, and we'd seen this on film a couple times, and we'd brought pressure one other time, maybe could have had a block, and I'm sure the center was a little bit worried about it. So that's a safety, 44-14. How about Trevor Height? You put him back there on a, a kickoff return. He's got good speed. He's got really good speed and, and uh, getting better and better. He's one of those kids that was injured early in his career. He's healthy. Uh, and he's been an impact guy for us. We're excited about his future. North and south there, right up the gut. You like to see that. Uh, again, Ty Brooks, his feet are always moving. That's what I like about yeah, Ty. Yeah, really good blocking. He follows the blocks and gets another big explosive play. 
No doubt. Uh, Bruce, uh, you know, he was injured at points during the season this year, but I think this play here shows that he's uh, fully back. I, I think so, too. Great cut, and then the burst and acceleration right there to run through some arm tackles. And I thought uh, as the game progressed, we saw a full-speed Bruce Anderson, which is what we we're going to need come playoff time. No doubt. 51-14. to 14. Here's their other good receiver, Landon Lenore, yeah. a sophomore. Yeah, really good, what we call RPO. They, they bring the linebackers up, faking the run, and, and throw it to him over the middle. He's a good player. Yeah, Derek Tuska, again, we're going to show him. Boy, his motor is something else. Yeah, a really good job by Tusk here. Of uh, Once again, the quarterback always was stepping up in the pocket, does a good job chasing him from behind. Reminds you of Kyle Emanuel a little bit there. He did a lot of those types of plays. They did hold him to a field goal here, 51 to 17 at this point. That's been a big thing this year, holding teams to field goals. Yeah, we've played really good red zone defense again, and, and as we move forward in the playoffs, it's going to be critical. Nice exit for Easton Stick right there. Emotional uh, day for him, no doubt. Holden Hotchkiss comes in and uh, made some nice throws. Yeah, excited for Holden to come in and make a couple plays. Uh, Phoenix getting a good catch. Uh, obviously, we weren't going to throw the ball a bunch up as much as we were, but uh, Really good snaps for a lot of young guys now. Uh, Adam Colfield, obviously a bunch of young old linemen. Nash Jensen in there. It's good to see some of those guys. Sabian Clark, uh, tell us about this kid again. A freshman from uh, Sioux City, Iowa. And uh, we really like what we've seen in, on scout team. He's running our scout team offense at, at tailback, but wanted to get him some carries in our four-game rule and uh, explosive back. Yeah, no doubt. He looks great. More senior exits there. Always emotional. Those guys, uh, just a bunch of warriors, no doubt. And more glimpses into the future when those guys come back out. And Michael Tutsi. Yeah, a really good job by Spencer Wagey coming from behind and tipping the ball right as the quarterback let it go. And then Tuts always around the football. He's going to be a really good player for us here. This next run by Adam Colfield, I love this run. It shows his cutting ability and just his north-south moves here in the pile. Yeah, and I think it just shows you how much better Adam Colfield has become throughout the season. I think he's going to be a special, special player. He's having a really good year for us, uh, and uh, he'll be an impact as the playoffs get rolling around. One of those kids that's always behind the scenes. You never hear his name. Great to see him on what Senior Day. What a great day. play by Bryce Bennett. And uh, our sideline was going nuts when Bryce made that tackle. And uh, one, of the, one of the great kids in our program. Goal line stand, it's important for the young kids when they're in the game to make these plays. Absolutely. They still had their first team offense out there, and they were throwing it to number 11. Good play by Jackson Brown. Great job getting out of that series with a bunch of young players. No doubt. There's Nick Hill and uh, yourself uh, at the end of the game. 65-17 to 17 was the final 663 yards of offense for the Bison. Uh, rush yards, 355. And I'll tell you what, SIU came in 200-plus yards a game. You held them to 88. That's great. Yeah, I thought our defense did a really nice job up front of shutting the run down and making those guys one-dimensional. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. We felt we had a strong leadership group, juniors and senior class coming in. We had a senior meeting before the season, and one of our goals was to go undefeated. We felt we had the ability to do that, and we had the leadership to do that. And So far, we've accomplished that goal, and, and it's really tough, obviously, going through the Valley like that. Um, hardest conference in the FCS, we think. and. Just to be able to maintain that consistency week, week in and week out is big for us. It's really hard to do. Thankfully, we've got a great group of leaders and, and 24 seniors that have been through it. And, uh, you know, it was a goal of ours. At, at the start of the year, we got together and, and said we wanted to do it, and we knew how hard it would be. And uh, so just really proud of, of the guys for getting it done. <laughs> we've been working since January. Uh, we knew we wanted to go um, get another championship, and we knew we had to put the work in to be able to do it. We always got a target on our back every week. and. And people give us our best shot. And just to be able to have that consistency week in and week out and, and show up and, and be able to perform like we have is just awesome. You know, it was an emotional week. Uh, that was an emotional moment. And uh, thankfully, the ball got kicked off pretty quick after that. And uh, we got to play. But um, it, just a lot of memories and, and, you know, feel really fortunate to have been part of this program. Great stuff right there. Had lots of candidates for our NODAC Insurance Player of the Game. And we knew one thing, it would be a senior. And Bruce Anderson was a big part of the offensive explosion against Southern Illinois. Bruce got himself ready for the playoffs with 12 carries. He ripped off 70 yards, two touchdowns. The explosion was there, and Bruce looks ready to roll for December. Credit to the, the Rams and to the receivers. You know, Dallas and a bunch of other guys made key blocks that allowed me to get downfield and it has made it effortless for me. And I just, uh, I thank those guys for just working their tails off in practice and just giving 100% every time. 
So we saw Bruce and Ty and Adam. Uh, Lance Dunn did not play in this game. Do you think he'll be okay? Yeah, he'll be ready to go for the playoffs. He was. He and Jalen Allison were close, uh, and we just didn't want to risk it. We wanted those guys to be healthy come December 1st. Well, let's look at one play. It was a fun play, and we want to discuss it a little bit. Uh, the jet sweep has been a big part of the Bison offense. But the fullback got involved with this one. I think this is great. Yeah, well, we need to find ways to get Brock Robbins a football. He's a yeah. talented young man. And we gave that same action a, a week before, faked the jet sweep, and ran Nate Jensen down the middle of the field for a play-action touchdown. Uh, and, and so in the same exact look uh, with Jens showing that look like he's going to maybe run vertical, and he sets the edge on a block. And it's just another uh, more diversity within our offense, whether it's running the ball or throwing the ball with different pieces. We have so many weapons. It's fun to draw up some new things. I thought it was a great design by Coach Mess and the staff. Yeah, Brock Robbins, you're right. Uh, very athletic, isn't he? He really is. He's a, a talented young man that uh, uh, is feeling so comfortable in our offense, whether he's catching the ball, blocking, or running it. Well, it's bracket time, so let's take a look at some of the contenders. You look at some of the teams out there. Do you come across any of these teams when you're scouting other teams? Like uh, Weber State played South Dakota this year. Do you see film on any of these teams? Yeah, Weber State, we saw against South Dakota. We just always know so much about Eastern Washington because we've played them uh, a few times. The team in the bottom of the screen we know quite a bit about <laughs> and JMU. And so, obviously, it's going to be a loaded bracket. And it's all about matchups. You know, mm -hmm. you can throw records out. Uh, uh, I think everybody has the opportunity once they get in the tournament to be successful, and it's all about matchups and how you prepare. And that group right there is going to be the two through seven seeds more than likely, uh, right behind the Bison, who will be the one seed. You know, how the conference ended up, I think, is interesting. It looks like probably going to get four in, but what a great story by Indiana State. They were 0-11 last year. They finished 7-4. and four. Yeah, and uh, that's where Grant Olson's at, uh, former Bison. He's done a great job with their linebacking core, Kurt Mallory. Uh, a friend of mine is the head coach. I've known Kurt for a while, and, and he deserves Coach of the Year, in my, in my opinion, to, for what he's done. And uh, uh, I, th I sure hope 7-4, and four, uh, I know they had one non-qualifying win, but yep. I, I sure hope that gets them in the playoffs because what a great story. Yeah, and it's always good for the league to get as many teams as possible in, isn't it? Uh, you'd like to see at least three or four every year. Yeah, we need to get four every year, yeah. and, and there's an occasion we could get five. You'd hate to only see three yeah. as good as, as our league has. No and, and we, you're right, there's three weeks ago I think we thought we could have gotten five. But, you know, whether it's Illinois State Western yeah. slipping up somewhere and all of a sudden you're not in. Yep, no doubt. It's going to be fun. Uh, the bracket comes out later today, and we're getting ready for a playoff run. The bye week's going to be nice for the Bison. We talked a little bit about it on Senior Day. Easton Stick, what a legacy he has left. We're going to dive a little deeper into that. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, it was an emotional Senior Day for Easton Stick. His place in Bison history is already set in stone. He's one of the best. The last eight years with Easton, Carson Wentz, and Brock Jensen have been outstanding at the quarterback position. Alex Egan puts some perspective on Easton's run in this week's Olaf Anderson construction feature story. Five years ago, Easton Stick stepped foot on North Dakota State's campus, and there weren't very many people who knew he would have the career he's had. Well, I saw a guy with real good uh, athletic ability, had ability to make plays in the open field and throw the ball to the field. Not even Easton thought he would be in this position when his career at NDSU is all said and done. You know, no, that, that's such a, no, I, you don't. And uh, it, it's just something you, you come in here and, and you're just swimming in it and you want to learn, you know, how can I just be a part of this? How, how can I belong and just uh, find a role on this team? Stick has planted his name in the NDSU record book, something his predecessor never got the chance to. Fair or unfair, Easton Stick will always be compared to Carson Wentz, and he's done everything he can to make his own name, becoming one of the top quarterbacks to have ever worn a Bison uniform. I think he's embraced it. Uh, I think he, he knows it's a challenge for him to get to that level. Um, he's extremely good friends with Carson, and I think Carson challenges him. He wants to get to that level, and that's important to him. Stick, of course, has had many mentors during his time at NDSU. Yeah, I could go on forever. Uh, obviously, uh, Coach Kleiman would be one. Coach Hedberg would be one. Coach Riley. Uh, Coach Ro There's so many guys. Uh, Carson obviously had a huge impact. Uh, guys like Chase Morlock, uh, Cole Davis uh, is somebody that, uh, you know, I could go on and on about, about the type of person he is and, and the friend he is to me. Um, shoot, th there's a really, really long list. There's some unbelievable people here. But it's been his drive, his attention to detail, which quarterbacks coach Randy Hedberg says has improved the most, putting stick 
in the position he's in. If the route is run to be to, uh, to be designed to run for 12 yards, he wants a receiver to run to 12 yards because that's where he's going to throw the ball. And uh, those things are really important to him. He wants to know the splits of where the receivers are going to be so he can throw to spots, and I think that's really important to him. He's very detailed, and he wants that within our program. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Alex Egan. Coach, he's just been an outstanding kid, uh, player all the way around, everything. Yeah, you can't say enough great things yeah. about him and uh, how he's made everybody around him better, and that's the sign of a great servant leader is you make everybody around you better, and he's raised everybody's level of play from coaches yeah. to players. No doubt. Uh, well, quarterback is a big position. So is center. The Bison are grooming a young kid to be a true center. Joe Schreiber out of Eden Prairie came in the last recruiting class, and Joe has a big future. The offensive line room has a lot of young talent in it. It's a position that always reloads at NDSU. The Rams are a huge part of the tradition of Bison football. Joe's father was a basketball player at Marist. Joe played basketball himself in Eden Prairie. And Eden Prairie is a legendary football program that wins a lot. And that is a big reason why Joe Schreiber was attracted to NDSU. That was one of the things that stuck out to me about NDSU, is just how similar of a program it was uh, to Eden Prairie, just with the success we've had here. And, um, and so, you know, I, I think it would be tough to be going from a school that wins a lot of games in high school to going to a program that doesn't win very many games. I think that would be a hard transition, but uh, just how similar this program was was, was perfect. So he potentially could be a center down the road. Yeah, you talk about uh, embracing the culture from what you had in high school, Eden Prairie. <laughs> they, they win all the time. And yeah. uh, uh, I think they're going to state championship again this year. And we're excited about Joe. Joe's a really intelligent player. Uh, he's played center in a pro-style offense in high school. To transfer over to college, we think he's got a really bright future. No doubt. Uh, Eden Prairie does win a lot of football games as well. Well-coached uh, high school program right there. We're going to set up the playoffs for you, go through some of the ticket information for you, so you can set the stage for what will be an exciting December again in Fargo. Playoff time's always fun, isn't it? It, it really is, and uh, our guys are excited about the challenge, and uh, we'll see what happens later on this morning, and we'll get to work on our next opponent. Yeah, our Verizon look ahead. we got some information for you that uh, you need to know as far as uh, ticket prices. The playoff tickets go on sale today, 3 p.m., uh, on GoBison.com only. There's the prices for you as well and uh, some of the information that you will need for uh, December 1st, the second round for the Bison. The Bison have a bye week. It's kind of nice to have that bye week. Boy, it really is. It's a mental break. It's a physical break, and, and guys need to get away from football for a few days. No doubt. Have a great Thanksgiving. You do the same. All right, and we'll see you in December for the playoffs, and we'll see you back here next week as well for a, a Bison football show. Enjoy it, everybody. The Bison are 11-0.